Hello everyone, this is Mark Van de Wettering of the Brainwagon blog. And I've just completed what I consider sort of the hello world of servo programming. I've actually never moved a mo motor in response to a microcontroller in my life. Uh, the other day I was at uh, Radio Shack, and it turns out that they sell these uh, nice little parallax servos. And since I was just sort of on a whim, I decided to just pick one up, and that's what this is. And of course, on top, I have one of our famous Pixar walking teapots. If you've ever ridden a SIGGRAPH, um, there's huge lines to uh, get these little walking toys that we did. This is the one that we did the year that we released Ratatouille, which was one of the last productions that I worked on. So this is really pretty simple, um, Arduino. There's one pulse width modulation output coming from the number two digital output that, um, that goes into the connector that is for the servo, the white uh, servo line is expecting the pulse width modulation input. Uh, here we have a little uh, 7805 based uh, power supply that's being run from this 9 volt battery. Um, you actually need to use a separate power supply because um, if this motor stalls or whatever it can draw uh, considerably more at least potentially than the half an amp that the uh, that the USB can supply. So you actually want to have a separate power supply and the servo expects somewhere between 4 and 6 volts, and it probably should be reasonably regulated. Um, 7805s are ubiquitous. I have a pile of them sitting around that I got from uh, DigiKey one day. I just, to pad out my shipping, I just got a couple dozen of these. So, And, uh, you know, it's interesting. The 7805 is a really commonly used uh, regulator. If you look at the data sheets for it, they all show these little tiny, you know, sort of 0.22 microfarad electrolytics to serve as filters. But if you look around, it seems like nobody uses <laughs> those values. They always use ones that are several times higher or hundreds of times higher. I've seen 100 microfarads. I've seen 10 microfarads. These are just some clippings from my uh, junk drawer. They're probably around 6 microfarads or maybe it's 2.2. Who knows? It doesn't seem to be too critical. The only other thing that uh, I noticed is that when I send this thing, nominally you're supposed to send it between 0 and 180 um, to... Uh, to uh, reach the full range, uh, the calibration isn't so great. So uh, if you send it to 180, it sounds like it's running up against the, uh, the stop. Um, so I uh, just arbitrarily truncated it off at 160. Uh, I suspect that uh, it just means that this, there's some manufacturing defect in servos. Since I've never used them before, I don't know about this stuff, but I'm sure that somebody out there does and will comment on the blog or, or on my uh, YouTube page about it. But this pretty much worked as, as C fits. Um, so what can you do with this? Well, um, my obvious idea was to mount something like a, a scanning webcam or maybe even an ultrasonic sensor for a robot back and forth. I mean, obviously, once you can move, uh, move uh, motors in response to programs, you've got all sorts of robotic cap calculations you can do. So, uh, so this is just uh, my Saturday morning. I woke up early to look at the eclipse. There was a lunar eclipse this morning, so I'm kind of just now waking up. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to show off and you know this is the kind of stuff that you could tinker together with your kids in no time at all. So this has been Mark Van de Wettering of the Brainwagon blog.